Hello everyone. In this tutorial today, we are going to be covering how to deploy a digital ocean droplet or VPS virtual private server completely from the ground up. And in this tutorial, I am going to try to cover everything that you need to know in order to do this. But if I forget anything, or if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments. Now, if you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Timothy Bramlett, and I am the co-founder of Stammer AI, as well as a bunch of other products that we've launched, some of which you can see behind me running in the terminals there. Now, we use DigitalOcean almost exclusively for our products. We also use AWS a bit and Google Cloud Platform, but we use DigitalOcean for the majority of them and we definitely highly, highly recommend them. Now, like I do with all my tutorials, let's just jump right in and start creating. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on this button and click on Create Droplet. Now you need to decide where to place the droplet. Now, this depends in many cases on where your ideal customers are, you know, where your market is. But for a small project, especially initially, you're not going to be worried about, you know, a distributed architecture that can handle millions of users. That's not what you want to think about. I'm going to do this in San Francisco because I am on the West Coast and most of our customers are in the West. Now, let's do this. So the next thing you have to figure out here is the actual data center. Usually this defaults for you. This is SFO3 because that's one of their newest, I believe. The VPC network, just select default for, for most cases. Now, choosing an image. I always use Ubuntu. Now, the reason for that is because they're, everyone uses Ubuntu. It's one of the most popular server OSs out there, if not the most popular. And because of that, there are a ton of tutorials that you can always find on how to do certain things. And my philosophy is to use established, stable, and popular technologies. You always want to take that philosophy, especially when building things that people pay for, things that businesses use, right? You don't want to be investing time and learning some niche technology only to find out that it breaks all the time or there's no information about it online. So I highly, highly suggest using Ubuntu in most cases, unless you're just a Linux expert who, you know, wants to use something else. Debian and, you know, CentOS, certainly very, very reliable if you know what you're doing. Now, uh, you want to choose a long-term support option, right? That's going to be supported for years and years in the future. So we're going to go with 2404. I don't have a lot of experience with it yet because I've been using 2204 for the past couple of years, but should be fine. Now the droplet type, you can always scale this up, right? And I'm going to talk about scaling in just a moment here because there's one important thing you need to know about vertically scaling a machine on DigitalOcean. It's very important, but uh, always start with something small because like I said, you can scale it up. So we're going to go with, you know, basic, we're going to go with regular. These are shared environments. So the sheep CPUs are shared between them and we're just going to go with the cheapest. Actually, that is the cheapest, right? I guess we could go with the $4 a month, but I always go with the $6 a month. Okay. And now let's just make a quick note about scaling vertically, because this is important to remember. If you upgrade your server, and I want you to know this from the beginning, do not upgrade the disk unless you absolutely have to, because the moment you upgrade that disk, you can't go back down to a smaller disk. And I'll have a video on this. This may be the next video I do. I'm not sure, but remember that. Okay, so we've selected our server. Do we need any additional storage? No, not for this. But keep in mind that you can add a storage volume in order to have a volume, that, kind of like a flash drive, you can think of it as. But you can move that between droplets. It stays, per, you know, it's not ephemeral. It stays around if you get rid of the main droplet. So that can be very, very handy. Next thing you need to select, backups. Yes, definitely enable backups. Okay, I'm going to click this. And we're going to use weekly backups for now. If this is going to be a production situation, then you're going to want to enable daily backups. But that's not the only thing you're going to want to do, in my opinion. You're also going to want to have a secondary system. You can, you can run your own code for this, although I don't recommend it. But you're going to want to take periodic snapshots 
of a production system. That's at a minimum. So you want backups and you want periodic snapshots to be taken. You want both. And eventually you need to test those, ideally before you move to production, but definitely once you start you know, getting actual paying customers. So we're gonna select weekly and just trust me, if I can drill one thing into you, do not go into production without backups. Okay, and SSH, so our authentication method. Here is where we are actually going to cover making the SSH key. This is very, very simple, so don't be scared by it. Okay, and now I always forget this command 100% of the time, but I am going to include it in the article that we're linking in the video description so you can have easy access to this. We are going to create it using the latest algorithm, the ED25519 algorithm. And let me just copy this. We're gonna go back to my terminal here. Obviously I am on Mac OS and I'm going to replace this with an email address. Okay, now we're gonna generate this SSH key and it's gonna create an SSH private key and an SSH public key. High level, the way SSH works is you generate a private key that is used to then sign and create signatures. And I'm probably butchering some things here, but then you share that public key as you're gonna see in just a moment. It's fine to share your public key and people can use it to ensure that, okay, yes, this, whatever I'm looking at here was actually signed by his private key that only he has access to. Okay, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Just know that you're gonna be generating a private key that you're gonna store somewhere securely that no one else has access to. And you're also gonna have a public key that it's safe to share on various platforms like DigitalOcean, GitHub. Those public keys get stored on the server so that when you attempt to sign in, it knows that you are who you say you are and you also have access to that server. There's a bit more to it than that and I'm butchering some things, but high level, that's what you need to know. So let's go ahead and generate this here. Now, it's going to ask us where to save, what file do we wanna save in? If I were to just hit enter, and I have to be very careful here, it could overwrite something that I've already created in here. It wouldn't be a huge issue, but instead we're gonna tell it exactly where to save this. So let's do that now. Okay, and what I've typed in here is I want it to save it in users, Tim, do, tutorial is going to be the name of the file. It will use this name to generate two files. So we're gonna hit enter. Here is where you can add a passphrase for additional security. So that is up to you. You can do that. Just remember, you're gonna to need to remember that passphrase. Okay, so that is now stored there. Let me actually pull up that key and we can take a look and see what's been created. Okay, so I moved these into a folder and we see two files have been created, right? We've got the do tutorial private key and then we've got the do underscore tutorial public key. Now, if we open this public key up, it's gonna be very simple, okay? So let's open this with, we're gonna, well, yeah, we'll use text edit. And as you can see, this is all it is, okay? We're gonna paste this into DigitalOcean. Actually, we're gonna do it right now. So let's just copy everything, okay? And we're gonna go back to their interface where we are creating a droplet. And we're gonna do new SSH key, right? Because we, this is a tutorial, we're not gonna use any of my existing ones. So we're gonna add a new SSH key. We are going to paste this in here and then we are good to go on this. We can add a name for it. We're gonna call it the exact name of that file, do tutorial. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can just call it, that's fine, do tutorial. So we're gonna add SSH key that's gonna be added into my account and now we can use it, okay? And I'll show you in just a moment how to actually SSH into this server. But we've got that key selected. We are good to go on that. You can select, or you should select, add improved metrics and monitoring. That's free, it's good to have. You'll see that in just a moment here. We're not gonna do a worry-free managed database. Uh, that is a good service of theirs, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. We're gonna do one droplet. We're not launching 100 here. This is important, the host name. 
make it something relevant, you know, to the server or the project that you're working on. We're going to keep it simple and we're just going to call it do underscore. Oh, let's just put it all together. Do tutorial. Okay. Tags. Tags become important later on and you can use them in order to kind of assign uh, firewalls by default, DigitalOcean firewalls. So for this project, we're going to keep it simple and not at a tag, but I wanted to mention it. The actual project, this is a digital ocean concept of organization, but we're putting this in the tutorials project, which is a project that I use for all tutorials. Now, pretty simple. We're going to click create droplet. And you're going to see it creating. This could take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do actually is pause the video and resume it whenever this is done. Okay, so that droplet has been created and we can see it sitting here waiting to be used. Now, the most important thing next is to get the public IP address of the droplet. I've done that. I've copied it to the clipboard. And now let's talk about how we are going to actually SSH into this droplet. So the SSH command is pretty simple in many ways. What we are going to do is SSH, then dash I, and we're going to specify the key file that we want to use, okay? And the key file that we want to use is in the home folder. That's what that symbol means in Linux and Bash. It resolves to the home folder of the currently logged in user. And then we're going to specify the name of the key file. And then we're going to do the user name at the host that we want to connect to. So for example, I am literally going to use this command ssh i d o underscore tutorial. And we're going to connect as the Ubuntu user at this IP address. I happen to know that in DigitalOcean, they set up an Ubuntu user in most cases for most of their images for you. So you can directly connect as that. So let's now bring up the terminal and see if we can SSH into the droplet. And really quickly, the application I'm using is not the default Mac OS terminal. This is actually something called iTerm2. It is free as far as I know right now. That is such a good application though that I would honestly pay for it. It's, it's that essential. We use it all the time. It's a more advanced kind of terminal application for Mac OS and it's incredible. The actual why my terminal may look a lot different than yours is I'm using something called ZSH. Um, I will get into that actually in another video. I can take you through how to set up ZSH um, and the specific plugin thing I use for it. I cannot remember the name of it right now, but it is amazing. I love it. I'll talk more about that in another video. Okay, but let's stop my crazy ranting and let's just paste in this command so we can SSH in and let's see if this actually works. Okay, the authenticity of this host cannot be established. Um, it's never seen this machine before, right? So as long as you meant to connect to this machine, usually this is safe if you're initially connecting to it. Okay, and one little correction here. We actually need to log in initially as root. I forgot that it is actually me doing that, setting it up the default images with Ubuntu user. But on DigitalOcean, by default, you can log in as root. And then you'll need to do, do some things to adjust that because you don't want to allow root login in most cases. So we're going to do that. We're going to do root at this IP address using that key. And there we go. We are now logged in. The first thing you're going to see is that there are some updates that can be applied. So what I'm going to do is sudo, which I don't really have to do because I am the root user, apt update. Okay. And we'll do that. That's going to fresh, uh, reach out and refresh the list of packages so that we can then run an upgrade command and upgrade everything that needs to be upgraded. So we're going to do sudo apt dist upgrade. And we're going to say, yes, we want to upgrade all of this. We're going to let that upgrade happen. And then we should be good. From here, we can start doing whatever it is we want to do, set up our application, set up whatever software it is that we want to run on this. But this is it. And this is how easy it is to set up a virtual private server. Now, of course, this is only touching the surface of what you can do. And really, in some cases, some of the things you need to know in order to kind of run your own applications in the cloud. But this is it for this tutorial. Like I said in the beginning, if you have any questions at all, please uh, ask them in the comments below. And that is it. Have a great day. Thank you so much.